conference, whether it be football or basketball, and in the past it was baseball, that it was Tulsa and Wichita State uh, come money time. And indeed, uh, incredibly in football, uh, it's going to be that way next week. Tulsa, Wichita State, big ball game. It'll be a big ball game for us, and last year, you know, they rather humiliated us down there, and I think it's something that we have to come back and, and do a good job against Tulsa this year because in order to stay in the race, we must get past Tulsa. And we're the only team, it looks like right now, that's going to beat them if anyone can, and, and so it's up to us to get it done. Now, they're a three and five ball club, but they're better than the record indicates, obviously. Oh, no, they're a fine, fine offensive football team and uh, three and five, but their five losses came to some great football teams. So, there you go. Wichita State and Tulsa. That's, of course, next afternoon out at Cessna Stadium. A one o'clock kickoff for that ball game. Get out and support these Wichita State Shockers. They are improving week by week. Two in a row for the first time in two and a half years. Next week, we'll be on at 11 o'clock for Coach Chismar and my producer, Kevin Hager. I'm Bruce Earl. Good night, everybody. Chicken. In the Missouri Valley Conference race, and a valiant effort for three quarters, Coach, but in the end, Tulsa flexes that big and considerable offensive muscle, and it just really had too much, especially on that uh, in that second half. Well, we could stay with them for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but I just don't think we could. We just couldn't hang for 60. It's that simple, and they were a big, strong bunch and had a lot of speed, and we just kind of wore out, and there was nothing we could do about it. Winning is the bottom line uh, in this business. There's no question, and you have reiterated that on numerous occasions, but uh, you have to draw some positives uh, from this performance, and I think one has to be uh, that the kids showed the character that, uh, that I think you've been trying to instill in them all season long. They had the heart, and they tried to, to play the entire 60 minutes. It's just a question of not having enough horses to pull the defensive train. Well, I think we worked hard. We worked hard at the game on both sides of the ball. The defense was put at an extreme disadvantage because of the shortcomings we have due to the injury situation, and and they just ran out of gas. I thought offensively we played very, very well in the first half. Defense played well in the first half. In the second half, we failed to convert on a couple situations on third downs, and I think it was the major difference in the ball game. We just felt like we could not give the ball to them because if you do, the next time you might get it back might be on a kickoff return. And it became that kind of game, and, and it's a shame, but uh, hey, that's the kind of horses they have. You bet. Absolutely perfect conditions yesterday for football. 58 degrees, a dry field, light breezes out of the north. Only 11,760 in attendance. Shame on you, Wichita. That's uh, not a good showing whatsoever for a ball game of this magnitude. Editorial comment from yours truly. TU wins the toss and will receive first play of the game. Coach, they come right at you. They sure do, and they run the option, and I'll be darned if he doesn't bust it right out of there and look like the track meet was on its way. But uh, our kids stiffened up a little bit and played pretty well. and forced them to punt. I think they got in trouble and on the option, I think, second or third play. Here it is here, and I think Gage gets knocked down in the backfield, and they try and run a little draw a little bit later and don't get it. So first series or two, we did very well and forced a couple punts. And really gave the defense some confidence, which yep. uh, carried over for the entire first half. Yeah, played well. Here's the draw on third down, and I don't think they make back to the line of scrimmage, so they're forced into a punting situation. 13 minutes, 14 seconds <coughs> left in the first frame. Velasco Smith. Velasco had another good day, and uh, he got some pretty good blocking up front. We handled their front pretty well, and, and his low center of gravity makes him uh, very, very hard to knock down. He does a great job of the ball in his hand. Now here's the second and eight. He pops for another nine. Bounces outside with it, and he's off and running, does a fine job along the boundary, and gets out of bounds with the ball. McDonald didn't go to the air as often yesterday here. He tries, but sees a good offensive opportunity and squirts the pocket. It takes off running himself down the sideline. We wanted to control the football, and the best way to control it and keep the clock running was stay on the ground, and that's what we wanted to do as long as we could have success with it. And we did it pretty well, especially in the first half. And a delay of game hurt us here. We got a delay of game penalty and ended up with a fourth down and about five. And Sergio kicks the ball through and we get the first three points of the game. Got to be feeling good at this point to have to have moved the football and to have stopped him defensively. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good series on both sides of the ball. And we had, once again, we had a three point lead and made you feel like you were in the ball game and going with it. That was a third and five. Shocks come up with a big D as Gage loses five on the play. Shocks can't move it, however, and with 3.02 left in the first frame, Tulsa takes over once again. Yep, and they're off this time and going, and this time I think they're going to go all the way with it, and they complete a pass. It's one of the first ones that they threw, and 
pretty good completion. He goes down the boundary for about oh, 15, 19 yards. Harrison to complete, uh, makes the grab on that, and then Gage keeps for 11 to the 30. A tremendous offensive quarterback and really the general of this offense. Yeah, he just strung that thing about as far as he could and then had enough speed to outrun the defenders, and he does a great job with the football in his hand. Big, strong kid, and he's got deceiving quickness for someone this He size. sure does. He kind of shocks you. He takes those big strides. You don't think he's covering much ground, but no one seems to catch him. Picks up 14 here to the 7. It's good for a first down. And then it's Booker coming up on the next play for the touchdown coach. Still in the ball game at 7-3 to three, uh, with time running down now towards the second period and the club playing pretty well. Yeah, well, it's 7-3 ball game, and we know that when we get the ball back, we've got to do something with it. And that's extremely important. And when you get the ball back, you do two things. Try to get some points on the board and don't give it up very soon. Hold Eric on Jensen to it. with some good all-purpose yards yesterday. He had over 100. He had over 100 yep. yards of kickoff returns. He did a great job coming back with the kickoffs, and and it gave us some pretty decent field position. He got some pretty good blocking, and we're come out of there in pretty good shape. Pops it for 33 right here. The period comes to a close with a four-point deficit. Coming back the other way, looking to go to the air. And I think. Uh, Brian takes a little check and gets to Eric, who picks up seven yards here, and we flexed him out a little bit uh, yesterday, and I think it helped open the situation up for us, and we were able to get him the ball a few times, not as often as we would have liked, but we did get the ball out there on a couple occasions. Here's a third and three that you convert on. It's a big third down play, and I think that uh, we catch it right on the corner. This is Danny Gilbert, and we get the first down, and it's important that you convert to third downs, and this is something that we had to do, and here's Velasco again for a big run, and I think he takes it to the end zone. It's a 12-yard gain and a touch. And once again, we go back up on top. So it's a seesaw game. It's a kind of game that we felt we could stay in if we could keep them down to a into a decent pace. And in the first half, we were able to do it. And Gage coming out there again makes the pitch. And now when they get on your corner, now they create major, major problems with you because they've got great speed out there. That was Brown for 10 yards to the 42 on a third and seven. Here's the big pass play as they come up with the first down. D will be the receiver. Yeah, he hits a tight end coming across, and we slipped just about the time maybe we would have had a chance to bat it down, and he goes down. I think the kid hurt a knee on that thing, got twisted up kind of funny. Run pitch here from Gage to Brown, good for 33 big yards to the ninth. Great job keeping the ball to the very last minute and then flipping it, and he comes down the boundary with it. This is great execution. They do a good job, and they've got the speed to get it done. With. Coach, what's the rule on the option? How do you like to defense it? Man-to-man uh, -man assignments, how do you work? Well, there's, a, there's only one or two ways you can do it, and there's a whole lot of responsibility involvement. And, and sooner or later, somebody has to run either to the pitch or run to the quarterback, and that's where they get you on the corner. And if they've got a lot of field out in front of them, then it becomes a speed game, and that's where we got in trouble. We couldn't catch them. So Velasco again, doing well. Indeed he was, a punishing runner and one that uh, continues to keep his feet as long as he possibly can as uh, the shocks now coming right back with 7 minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Uh, Dwight Eaton is going to come up with a nice run coming yeah, up here after up Velasco. Velasco again and we come back up the middle with uh, our fullback and Dwight does a good job with the ball and we move the ball in pretty good shape and we're, we're trying to keep the the clock running and still trying to get down there and get some points on the board and I think we accomplished both and we don't quite get the first down I think we have to settle for a field goal try here. Indeed it will be Sergio Lopez Chavarro this time from 40 yards out the kick is up and the kick is good at this point 14 uh, to 13 in the ball game with time running out uh, Tulsa will uh, wage a little bit of an offensive comeback uh, they just were an offensive juggernaut and uh, they really didn't pass the ball uh, a lot of times, but when they did pass the ball, they were successful. Yeah, they threw it pretty effectively. They only threw it ten times all day, I think, but threw it pretty well. But when you're running the way they're running, I don't know if it's necessary to throw it too often. And he's, he does a pretty good job. They get down close enough to attempt a field goal right before the half, and it is kind of a long field goal, and I, I don't think it was very close to being good, but they do, uh, they do have a shot at it. It looks like about a, what, 45-yarder? Indeed it is, and it's going to be short and wide as time runs out. At the half, Tulsa 14-13 over Wichita State. Coach, you had to feel good. Statistics pretty much even. Offense did a good job controlling the ball. You had it six more minutes than Tulsa, and the defense uh, made the plays when they had to. Yeah, I think that, that by and large it was a pretty good football game. We would have liked to have been up at halftime because as, as much as we had controlled the ball, we would have liked to have had a point or two on them or maybe a touch, and, and we didn't have that. But other than that, I thought we played well. I thought our kids hustled well, and, and we were very, very much in the football game throughout the third period, as a matter of fact, but the fourth was another story, and we shall recount that tale when we come back to the Ron Chismar Show. Wanted to bide a little time, let the kids get some rest, perhaps, uh, let the offense control the football. What do you want to do on this opening drive here in the second half? 
Well, I think the one thing we wanted to do was eat up some clock. The second thing, naturally, was to get the ball up into at least excellent field position, and then thirdly, we'd like to get some points on the board. And we did get a first down or two, but then we couldn't convert, and we got in trouble on a third down situation. Had to punt the ball away. And any time yesterday, you had to punt the ball away. You had to feel like uh, you were really flirting with disaster, and that's what happened to us. Second half action: Wichita State and Tulsa. Remember, Wichita State down by the narrowest of margins at the intermission. McDonald, thou looking to put the football in the air, and coach, you're going to open up the offense a little bit in this first series. Well, we get down the second down and long yardage, and we decide to go play action, and Brian and Albert Hundley hook up, and it's, it's really well done, and we get the first down, and we're starting to move the ball just a little bit, and we're on third and a long three later on in the drive, and we have to come back and, and try to pick up the first down. We try to get the thing crossed, and we can't see it. They do a good job of covering it. It's got great protection but he can't find anybody open because they've dropped so many people. And I tries to get the long ball to Jack Owens and, and the ball's overthrown and we don't complete. We have to punt the ball away. The offensive line really did a good job. Their cup protection was excellent all yeah, day. Had a pretty good job of protecting him and they did a pretty good job of covering downfield on occasion. That's what made the difference here. Here's Booker for 17 as Tulsa takes over with 13 minutes, 15 seconds left in the frame. Uh, they had an awful lot of people that could move the football on the ground. Yeah, they've got some talent and they've got a lot of skilled kids and they're awful big up front and you put all that together and here's what happens with the quarterback on the corner. We're trying to get to him and still cover the pitch, man. That's hard to do, and he makes a lot of yardage on you. 13 in particular for another first down. Tulsa had 34 on the afternoon. Here's Brown now for another 11. They're chewing up yardage to the 26. Have they come back with a dive because if your linebackers bail out too soon to cover the pitch or the option, then the dive hurts you. And so they've got you kind of in a catch-22 deal here, and you get caught in a whiplash, and there you are. Gage, very durable. He carried the ball some 30 times, gained over 200 yards, but he just kept coming back for more yeah, He's more. a big, strong kid. He does a great job with it, and uh, he did take some punishment and still came back. And here's a great play getting in the end zone, and they end up going on top 21-13 now. And so now it looks like your, our backs are to the wall, and, and we respond decently and come back. Eric Denson again with another good return. It follows up as one of 33 with another 38-yard effort. That's a great job of coming back on a kickoff. Gets a block right here on the corner, and and up the sideline he goes and now just becomes a foot race and, and he does a great job returning kicks. Now offensively you get on the field you got to be feeling like you can move the football as you have all game long. Dwight Eaton for nine yards here. He picks up the first down and it's a, I think a third and five or third and six and looks like third and eight. Picks it up with a, about a nine yard gain and we're moving the football again and I don't think that we're able to uh, go down and score on this particular drive and we have to turn it over. But this is a good run by Eric's great job. Jerry Quick out in front. And this is Velasco coming through on the counter. And we're moving the ball effectively. And we're, we're churning up a lot of yardage and, and clock as we go. And this is what the thing's all about. And now we try to come back and hit one. This is the, the sack of the day and the only one. And, and couldn't come at a worse time. It gets us, takes us out of field goal range. And it's the only time the guy came off the corner in that situation. And now here we are in third down. And we can't find anybody open. Got a lot of time to throw the ball. but. They're doing a good job of protecting. They're also doing a good job of defending. And you take Brian back to the table for a drink, I guess. <laughs> no whistle on the play, and I think some of the partisans thought there might have been one, but the Hurricane take over with 6.01 left in the third. Flank a reverse here goes for 11 yards to the 31. Yeah, this is a good job of, of setting up the reverse, and yet it wasn't quite as, as effective as it might have been. They got 11 out of it, but it's the kind of thing that can break a game wide open for you. And they're chugging the ball downfield, trying to uh, take their lead into a two-touchdown deficit. And, they get down there pretty close, and I think we do come up with a big break. First man on the option through was Booker to 13 to midfield. Now Gage is going to keep it for 13 more on the weak side to the 38-yard line. Yeah, he's up and down the football field, and I think Brown then goes for another big-time gain, and they're down there knocking on the door, and then I think they run into a little bit of a problem, which is we're very, very grateful for. This is a gain of 20. Keep in mind that Tulsa set a new school record, their school record for rushing yesterday, 557 yards. They had over 600 yards in total offense, yet uh, it was a testimony to the Shocker defense to a certain degree, this bend but not break philosophy that they seem to have, that they only put 42 points on the board. <laughs> yeah, they could have had more than that the way things were going. This is a, a big break by us, and it's, a, it's an alert recovery by Darrell Whitley, and we get the ball on the nine-yard line. We're deep in our own territory, but at least we have the football. And I think that's uh, what it's really all about. Now Velasco pops through on the counter again, and this is a big play, comes up for a first down, and he gets about 16 yards. 
He had 191 on the day, Coach, now 700 on the season. Uh, he's just uh, bloomed into an incredible offensive uh, He has become a fine, fine weapon. Here Brian goes back to throw, doesn't find anybody and decides to run, and the thing turns out to be from a little run into a great run. Does a super job with it. He got a great block from Eric Denson. Now he's going to get a big block from Albert Hundley just barely gets in the end zone. So this is about a 70, 75 yard run and it's a great, great effort and we're right back in the ball game. We get a chance to go for a two point conversion and we go and, and we got the guy open, he hits him in the end zone and they call holding it because the ball was dropped and, and they, they did hold the receiver and so we're only about a yard and a half away and we think we can punch it in and we just can't quite make it. So we're at 21-19 and they're back with the football. Three minutes, the next three minutes of the ball game would really spell the shock's uh, end. Booker keeps for 12 to the 40, an unintentional face mask moves it for the 45. Then it's Gage again keeping for 13, or actually this is the ball up the middle again to Booker. Uh, but they just really, when they had to gut up and come at you. Yeah, they did it. This was the, the three minutes was probably the biggest horror story of the ball game. And we just couldn't seem to do anything with him at this time. He keeps the ball to the very last instant and pitches it off. And, does a great job with it, and, and we just could not catch him, is what it boiled down to. Two plays later, Gage is going to go over for the touch. The kick would be good, and at this point, 28 to 19, Coach, what's your attitude at this point? Are you thinking, well, we can still uh, we can still finagle our way back into this ball game and try to steal it, or do you well, think it's slipping it, away? Well, you could feel it slipping, but you didn't. You, there's no way that you could change what you were doing. You tried to, you had to completely stay with what you were doing because if you went in any other direction and start throwing the ball all over the field, then you're going to give it away for sure. And and then this this was the one that broke our back. I think they finally they got the ball back and. And he breaks, I think, the first or second play for 59 yards. This is a great job by Gage. And, and you can see we've got a lot of chances to catch him, and we just can't do it. So that breaks the football game wide open. And, and now you've got a total different ball game on your hands. 35-19 after the extra point. Again, the shocks cannot move. It's tall as defense is tough when it had to be. Wichita State, remember, had one of their best offensive games of the season, 413 yards total offense. But uh, in the face of 637 for the opposition, it would obviously not be enough as they continue to move the football when they have to control it late in the second half. Yeah, they did a good job with it. And, and you know, we did a good job with it offensively, but there's no way you could match what they were getting done when they had the football. And here he just flat out runs. He, we've got him boxed in, and he outruns three guys to the corner and picks up the first down. And, and I think that's the total difference in the football game. We just can't get the ball off of them. And now they're starting to just punch it at us and inside, outside, wherever it is. And we're a worn out football team right now on the defensive side because they've taken a lot of pounding and, and we're very, very thin up front. We, we don't have anybody that we can put in there extra because we've used everybody we have. So there they are and he finally gets in again. And I think the game's out of reach and, and yet we still come back and take the football and go down and get another score. So I think our kids hung in there well and everything. It's just that uh, we just didn't quite have enough guns to get it done. There's Velasco on the screen and he's picking up about 15 yards right here and, and then we're going to go downtown with it I think again and, and we do pretty well. This is the draw play that uh, Velasco's running. And we come out of there and we come down for a chance to get on the board again and, and we want very much to do that and see if we can't get another touchdown or two. You don't ever want to feel that you're ever out of a football game, although in reality you realize you might be. This is Eric Denson coming in and, and does a good job on a cutback, a good job running with the football. We get down about the 11 yard line. It's always nice to score the last touchdown of the game, even if you're out of the ball game, because it gives you a little step on the next week. I know that's hard to see down the road, but I always felt that way when I was in well, the game. Well, I think it's true that you, no matter what, you want to continue to play and play hard until the gun goes off. And here Velasco gets in for the final score of the day, and we try the onside kick and don't get it, and that's the end of the football game. 42 to 26, Wichita State's two-game winning streak snapped by Tulsa, and any chances of the Missouri Valley Crown fleeting at best at present. Next up is Illinois State. That comes up next week, and we'll have a preview when we return. Maybe you can combine them. It was both. a huge, huge ball game for our kids, and I know they took the loss very tough, and I don't, I don't think it's something that you can forget overnight. But we know what we're in. We know we have another opportunity to play again this week, and we've got to suck it up, and we've got to go out and play this football game and we've got one more left so we've got two games that just all that is is two more opportunities to win and it's the only way you can look at it and you have to forget the past even though it's extremely difficult to do well as Tulsa may not have been a football team that Wichita State felt like they could have beaten if you realistically took a look at it on paper Illinois State is certainly a team that Wichita State can and indeed should beat even I'll say that the coach won't Let's take a look at some of the Illinois State highlights from last year. Coach, it was a 17 to nothing ball game, last one of the season. Not a particularly good effort put forth by your kids. But what about Illinois State this year? 
Well, they've been an up and down football team. They've uh, they've played very very well at times, and then they've uh, they've staggered at times. So uh, I think it's uh, a whole lot has to do with an attitude situation, especially late in the year like we are now. And it's a matter of how well are you going to come out and play on the particular day that you play, because I don't think you have enough uh, of anything else to go on right now. You've got to line up and get it done. Offensively, you guys have been doing a much better job uh, than earlier part of the football season. You've got to be feeling good about your offensive football team. I think they've come of age, and I think we're playing pretty well, and we've been able to, to keep ourselves in a certain degree of health on that side of the ball, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Defensively, of course, is another story, and we shall see how the defensive unit responds in the face of adversity, an awful lot of injuries, and a tough performance yesterday against Tulsa next week when we return for the Ron Chismar Show. Remember, it'll be on at 11 o'clock. For the coach and my co-producer, Kevin Hager, I'm Bruce Earl. So long, everybody.